Wanted to thank our great sponsors of this program, Roberts Motors, uh, great members of the community and great sponsors, great supporters of the radio station and great supporters of Business Over Brew. This month on the radio, they had St. Louis radio legend and Big Z afternoon show host, The Smash, voice their commercial. So I thought in honor of that, I would do my best Smash impersonation and voice the commercial that they're, they're running on the Big Z this month. So here goes. Hey, it's Smash here to tell you about... <clears throat> let, me, let me start that over. <clears throat> Smash here with some smashing deals on new Fords from Roberts Motors Ford. Starts with you texting SMASH to 96300. When you do, you'll get your best and highest trade-in value. You'll see if your deal can be done with zero down. And most importantly, you'll find out if you're approved. You eye and afford escape a new 2020 F-150 pickup. Text SMASH to 96300 for your smashing discount. Roberts Motors Ford in Alton or at robertsmotors.com. Additional texting charges might apply. Check with your mobile service service provider. How is that? Welcome to Business Over a Brew. Pleased to be joining you this time from the uh, Miller King Law Firm again down at the uh, at the basement of the Miller King Firm. Normally we're joining you from the Great Rivers Tap and Grill out at the Best Western Premier. Uh, we'd love to be there again but due to COVID-19 restrictions unable to shoot there at the moment but if you have a chance to uh, do business with them. I, I highly recommend the chicken strips. Number one are fantastic, so they're they're definitely worth doing a carry out order or some of their flatbreads. But uh, uh, we'll be back there as soon as we possibly can. But thanks to the Miller King Law Firm for uh, for hosting us this, this time and. Uh, uh, a great guest who told me he's been waiting for this invite uh, and yes. hadn't received it yet. Al, Al, Al Womack from the Boys and Girls Club of Alton with us. Al, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Nick. I, again, I've been waiting for this invite, so long overdue, but I am happy to be here. <laughs> well, well, just tell us a little bit about your background. I know Alton High grad and athlete and talk about uh, sure. what was Al Womack like growing up. Sure. I think I was probably that nightmare of a kid growing <laughs> up. Uh, if you look at me today, you, you probably wouldn't believe that, but um, grew up... Um, from a divorce family. Um, I'm the oldest boy out of six kids. And um, again, low income with some challenges, um, but a lot of love. So so in a kind of a, a nutshell, that was me growing up. Um, then I turned into this big kid that happened to enjoy playing football. And um, people had to tell me, hey, you're pretty good at this. You have an opportunity to go to school. Again, that, 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 that wasn't even in my, in my sight. It was just, I enjoy playing. Um, it got me out of my neighborhood. It got me out of unique situations. So um, going to practice, playing games, being able to rough people up was like a big part of my childhood, my early childhood um, and teen years. Um, again, it turned into something where it put me on a track really to, to manhood in a sense by uh, setting goals and, and, and identif identifying things that um, were important to me and important to my future. Offensive side of the ball, defensive side, so, both? Or? So in high school, I played both ways and loved, loved playing both ways. Typically, you get to college and you have to pretty much um, play one position. So offensive side of the ball when I got to college. I, I, I coached football and I always said that offense is a little more challenging to play because for an offensive play to go right, most of the time, 11 guys have to do their job well. Uh, and if one guy doesn't do it, yeah, the it, defense can blow up the exactly. entire play. Exactly. Uh, so it does. It, I think football teaches you so much about teamwork, working, especially on the offensive line. Definitely. You have to work together. So teamwork is huge. Um, discipline, you know, again, not jumping off sides, knowing the snap count. It's little things that football teaches you and prepares you for in life. And, and that's what I could say the benefit for me, football prepared me for life. Again, it, it put me on a path, it put me on a track to get a better education to leave this area and kind of go see the world. I had an opportunity to travel and see, uh, go to some amazing states and some amazing cities. And you know, ultimately it, it brought me back here because after graduating and, and re receiving a degree in business, um, I got a chance to come back here and, and run the business of probably one of the vets, not for profits, I think in the country, the Boys and Girls Clubs. Were you involved with the Boys and Girls Club growing up? Not at all. And, and, and it, it didn't exist necessarily here mm -hmm. at all. And I think as I was headed to college, they had opened up a unit here in Alton um, but I was gone, um, but Bethalto had been around already for a couple of years. So Bethalto was a big part of bringing a, un a unit of Boys and Girls Clubs to Alton. 23 years there, I think, if I'm yes. not, not mistaken. How did you get started there? Was it straight um, to executive director? Or? It, it was not, it was not a, you know, you heard that phrase started from the bottom, now I'm here. Um, so 
someone had nudged me and kept saying, hey, they're looking for help at the Boys and Girls Club, which, which seems to be an ongoing trend. Is they were looking for help, and, and, and I waited a month or two because I was working in the Alton School District, um, and I popped in the club and said, let me check it out. And what I saw was 50 kids running and screaming in the gymnasium, and it reminded me of when I was a kid. Um, I seen it was, it was kids from similar neighborhood that I was from. So I was sold the first day. And then again, I started off 12 hours a week um, working at the club and I actually asked to volunteer first. I don't want to commit until I know what I'm getting into, but I volunteer, well I didn't volunteer, I intended to volunteer, but they paid me for that first week and I've been there ever since. So. so going back to college, you played football in college, did you have aspirations at what point at a certain point we all figure out we're not going to play professional right, sports right. for a living when was that point for you that was um unfortunately for anybody that played football i mean there's days where i wake up in the morning and i just still finished, ready to roll i just finished the game <laughs> i just had a game on the road and I was with my teammates and i'm almost 50 now but um in, in college uh, i think i had a successful college career playing offensive guard played beside some amazing um uh, amazing nfl guys um guys that were able to go on to the NFL. I expected that and, and I, again that was part of the dream to to go play in the NFL and then uh, part two of that was to come back to my community and, and start a youth center. So the NFL didn't didn't necessarily work. Um, I had an injury that you know most people suffered as major injury. Mine was really minor but it kept me from being able to run mm -hmm. um, and, and playing offensive side of the ball I was I would consider maybe fast and quick for uh, offensive guard right but I tore my ankle up you know um, and I just couldn't run. We had a pro day, and I was probably two or three weeks out of surgery. So that didn't help at all, and, 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 and I, I watched it fade away. Right. So there's some regrets that maybe I could have done something a little bit different to position myself to have that chance or opportunity, but it didn't happen, so um, you know, it's just behind me. Well, I can say that our, our community is, is blessed and fortunate that it didn't happen, that, yeah. that you're at the Boys and Girls Club and, and doing great things there. Talk about the progression from starting there to, to executive director. It was, um, so when, when, I, when I first started, I was a program assistant, again, about 12 hours a week. Um, moved on to be a camp director for a nine week summer program. Um, did that for two summers. And then I came on as a program director and probably a year into being a program director, there was this um, opportunity for the Boys and Girls Club of Alton to become its own organization. And um, uh, when we separated, we had actually a separation from Bethalto. When we separated, um, we had the name of an executive director and I was fortunate enough to be named the executive director. Um, so, and, and I watched this come from being this poor club where you know you donated stuff that you just didn't want, your old trash you know, people donate stuff they didn't want to the charities. Um, so we, we got away from being that, that, that poor charity that people just gave things that they didn't want to. Um, so now we're, we, we, we take pride in who we are and what we do and, and the, the kids that we serve and the service that we offer. And, you know, we accept a donation. It's something that's of value mm -hmm. to, the, to the donor that they, they want to give to the club and the kids. So again, just, just going from, again, from being that needy organization to you know, we, we feel like we really established ourselves. And when you started, uh, was it in the Catholic Children's Home on State It was, or? it was. Um, always thankful to the people at the Children's Home, starting with Steve Roach. Uh, Steve continues to be a supporter. Um, I can recall Steve saying, that Al, long, as long as I'm here, you have a home for the Boys and Girls Club. There wasn't a lot of opportunities out there for us to move. Mm -hmm. um, we started looking, you know, about three years ago, and we were fortunate enough to, um, to uh, get a nudge or a nod from the school, Alton School District saying, hey, we just vacated our Motivational Achievement Center and why don't you take a look? Uh, I walked through there and w along with some board members and I'm like, this is it, this is Boys and Girls Club. So we are happy with um, transitioning from, you know, a place we'd been in for about 20 years to, to a, um, a bigger facility at Children's Home. No, I'm sorry, at, at the James Center. Right. Yes. One of the, uh, I think one of the coolest things you guys have done in the last several years is the the tennies and ties and sure. just the, and the talk a little bit about that and what that has meant to the kids what it's meant to you it was it was i'll be honest it was personal it was personal to me um because if as i looked at again young men that, that reminded me of myself um needing a um, consistent uh, adult male figure in their lives uh, i 
I really think you have to see a man to be a man. So heard that being said, how can we expect young men to grow to be men and, and understand what responsibility and accountability looks like if, if I've never seen that, right? Right. So it was, let's, let's do this so that at the very least our young men can identify with what a real man looks like and what a real man should be doing. Um, then and it's you just add, such a minor thing, putting a tie on. Yeah, that, that was that was the hook, though. Right. That yeah. was the hook. It was, uh, it was. Let's have these conversations, and at the end of our conversations, now we teach you how to tie a tie. So that was like right. your, that was like your passport. We called it passport to manhood. So this was like your, yeah, you know, at the end of each session, and not only just putting a tie on, but learning how to tie two or three different knots, um, learning to dress. You know, when you dress well, you you tend to your, your behavior tends to change. Mm -hmm. So there was definitely some intention behind it. The other piece really was. Uh, seeing what was taking place across the country with, uh, let's let's be real without getting too deep into it, but seeing what was happening when African American males were encountering law enforcement. Um, it didn't always turn out the way we like. We like to see both parties go home safely mm -hmm. to their families. That wasn't happening. So I thought if there's an opportunity here for me to have some influence on young men to, to, to achieve and change the mindset because if you're pulled over, um, the police, they are the authority, right? And then is that the time to really question and argue? Even for myself, is this, is this not the time? There's right. another opportunity if you disagree. So trying to put it in the mindset of our young men that this is an opportunity to comply. And um, if you had a concern about uh, the legitimacy of being stopped, uh, knowing the process that you should take. So it was so many messages mm. here from running that program to making sure that the police officers got home safe, and then young people, uh, especially African American men that were having the encounters, got home safe as well. Yeah, it's a, a difficult conversation that, that we're all having right now, I think. It and, is, uh, it is. And there's so many different messages, mm -hmm. but I want to make sure that the right message was getting to our young men. We, you know, it's, and you see right now, cops are being recorded. It has to be tough to be a cop. Um, right. At, at the same time, it's tough to, to, to be an African American male who feel like I'm a target, too. Again, so how do we how do we how do we have a good encounter? And and that, that a big part of that program was making sure that everybody got home safe. Talk about some of the other services that uh, the Boys and Girls Club of Alton offers. Sure, um, education is a big part of what we do. We mm -hmm. we want to make sure that kids have an opportunity to be um, successful in the classroom, and we want to pro provide the support and the tools and the resources to make sure that that happens. So we we support education. Um, I'm proud of our our relationship with the Alton School District. Um, to make sure that, you know, they support what we're trying to do with the kids. So that's huge. Life skills, um, health and, and fitness, uh, you name it, there, there's, there's an abundance of programs that we want to make sure that ultimately kids are on track to become a responsible, caring, and productive citizen. So that's what we're trying to do. So the program side of it is, is certainly one hat that you wear. Sure. But then you also have to be a kind of run a business too from, exactly. the, standpoint, from the financial standpoint because those exactly. things cost money. Talk about exactly. that challenge at the, uh, for you. So, so the, the business side of it is probably the most um, challenging part of it because it's, it's so easy to go to work and say, you know, I'm going I'm to connect with some young men or, or kids today and, 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 and make that be a big part of your day. Um, but the, the business side of it is, yes, we have to we have the challenging job of competing for funds that so many other agencies are competing for. Right. Um, here recently, if you know you're in all the community, you've heard me on the radio, you've seen something on a in the newspaper that says we lost a big source of funding. Um, definitely, it's been disputed, and and, and I think uh, respectfully, both sides have their opinions as to why we're not getting that funding. But ultimately we're going to be missing out on right. over $100,000 for the kids in our community. Um, so the challenge on us as an organization, the board, and myself, is how to how to make up the loss for that $100,000. Right. Uh, so, so again, we're hoping the community steps up. This is not an appeal, but this is just where we're at, that uh, hopefully people have, have, said, have seen something or heard something that says, I want to invest in making sure our kids have a brighter future. So the opportunity is there. And alongside of that dilemma and, and issue is where, you know, you're trying to build a new new playground at the, at sure, the club too. Sure. And uh, I know that's a, a project that's really near and dear to your heart right now. It is, it is. So so people probably is like, what are they doing? You know, um, um, so we want to secure the future of the organization. We want to secure the future of the club. 
um, by making sure that the, the money is there to make sure we can open our doors every day for kids, to make sure that we can keep our costs. Um, you know, we charge kids $20 per year. Um, that funding helped us do that, um, when in return, it really costs us about 500 a year per child right. to participate in our program. So we, we, we're, we're taking on that challenge of trying to secure the future of the organization, but then part of securing the future of the organization is making sure that kids are safe and able to play and have fun while they're there. And um, with our playground project, it's, you know, I don't think it's safe, um, it, you know, mainly when I look at our fall surface, it, it, could, be, it could be better for kids. If a kid falls, I want them to be able to pop and bounce back up. Right. Um, so we want to make sure we create a safe space for play, but an inclusive space as well. And that takes money. Um, it's not cheap. It's, we, we've learned that inclusive equipment is about triple the cost of regular equipment. So we hope to build a safe surface with, with nice new shiny equipment and the opportunity to bring in some inclusive equipment so that all kids in this community can enjoy a playground. In a part of the, the of of Alton that, that really, it'll benefit a lot of people. It, it will benefit a lot of people um, um, just because we're on that, we, we, we're kind of like, we're, we're in the main area and there's a lot of traffic, um, there's a lot of families. So our playground would not be limited to just Boys and Girls Club. We're thinking community here by building something that people can come to. And, and nobody, no one has said it, but you know, a block up the road is, is a park that has a playground. Um, so we, we already see a population of kids, though, that are naturally on this grounds that we're on, that we want to make sure that they have that opportunity as well in a supervised way versus mm -hmm. open play at a park, but the majority of kids will be utilizing that, will be supervised at some point while they're playing. I, I look at it, too. You've had some tremendous business partners. Sure. Uh, Eddie Scholo Jr., Fast Eddie's, and, yes. and Simmons Hanley Conroy, Helm Camp Construction have all stepped up yes. to donate, and I know there'll be many more uh, business owners that, that'll mm -hmm. do the same. I look at it as something that can really be a, a centerpiece as an example of how our business community works with local nonprofits to sure. provide essential services for our community. It's I think it's huge, and and uh, and you mentioned the the support that we have so far with with um, Eddie Scholler, um, Helm Camp, and Simmons Hanley Conroy. Um, I think they're the trendsetters for this project, but it does it sends a message, and I think the whole concept was to have community members invest in it. So you don't have to have the 10 grand that they may have, you may have $10, you know, and you have $100. That investment is gonna mean a lot to the kids that are gonna benefit from um, having a nice new playground. But I think the pride that will come in as a community that says, I invested in what those kids are playing on right now. So um, it's huge and, and, and I think more people step up. It's, it's slow right now, it's stagnant. Um, we do want people, you know, that, that are thinking about it to go ahead and write a check and say, I want to be a part of this project. I want to be a part of uh, bringing something new to community for kids. Well, it's a worthwhile project, and I, I, I have every confidence that the community will step up and, and support it, just and support the Boys and Girls Club through what, uh, you know, unfortunately, financially is going to be a challenging next three years. It is. It um, is. But uh, I, I have faith that they that they will, as, as they always do. Um, talk a little bit about, uh, just kind of wrapping up here a little bit, um, who have been some of the biggest mentors in your life? Really? Um, it's, it's, and again, I was probably that kid that, that stayed, that, that kind of stayed in the background and I observed different people. So, you know, I was kind of almost piecing together what that role model or that mentor would look like for me, which, which was a, a bunch of people. But, um, I'll definitely say, you know, I'll, I'll talk about family support collectively as a family. Um, again, we had our challenges, but I think um, the strength and support of a family. So I won't necessarily say an individual, mm -hmm. um, but in that regard, uh, I think the people that came to my life through sports, um, looking at let them as mentors and, 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 and role models, um, educators, um, you know, many educators that really took uh, a special interest in, in my life and my, my future. Um, and I could throw out so many names, I don't wanna uh, leave anyone out so I'll just talk about the professions and the areas that they were in that had the biggest impact on me. Well I, I bet if I'm lucky enough to, to keep doing this show for for a number of years and I'm gonna ask somebody that question sitting in that chair and they're gonna say Al Womack was one of my biggest mentors. So. You know hopefully hopefully I can, I can add an impression on someone. I, I know you have already over 23 years. Yeah I, I appreciate I'm that. I'm sure there's a lot of a lot of kids that would say 
I wouldn't be where I was without Al. Yeah, so. well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, appreciate everything you do for the community. If somebody wants to donate to the cause, how can they yes, go about yes. doing that? Um, they could, they could, two approach. Um, you can call me, 462-6249. Um, just to inquire, ask questions about how to move forward. Um, um, we have a website that I'm going to leave the www <laughs> off of. But uh, we got bgcalton.org. You can go there make a contribution. Um, we have an opportunity for people to do payroll deduction, uh, make a donation by credit card, go to our PayPal, make reoccurring contributions. So there's so many opportunities that I'm, I'm more than willing to have a conversation with. Um, support the organization or even support the project. Um, both benefits our kids. Well, Al, thanks so much for, for coming on. Thanks for all you do for the community. And uh, if you have a chance to donate, I, I highly encourage you to do that. You'd probably think about things that you, you spend money on that you maybe don't need to in your life. And I bet everybody has a little bit that they could give. And not, but if you don't, at least share the information with, sure. with other people. Uh, get the word out about all the great work the Boys and Girls Club of Alton uh, does. And, and it's so vital to the community. We've got to continue to support it. So, Al, thanks a lot for coming on. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thanks, thanks sir.